What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 98 of Week in Review. My name is Sean, and on this week's show, we're talking about NBA 2K20 Story Mode, Gears 5. We'll look forward to this week's new releases, and I'll tell you about streams happening over on Twitch.tv slash SeanasaurusRex. First up on this week's show is NBA 2K20 Story Mode, and while I typically enjoy these story-focused single-player uh, campaigns in sports games, this one just didn't do it all the way for me. I don't actually really buy the core concept. You play as a college player that has stayed in school for four years, and for some reason, this is a downside. Like, scouts in the NBA doubt your commitment to the game, and you're probably not going to get drafted. I never understood that, and so from, like, the, the a very early point in the game, I just didn't get it. Like, I was, I was like, what the hell? Like, thinking about it in my own brain, I was like... It sounds like he's committed. It sounds like he's committed to staying in school for four years and bettering his craft and, like, not coming out before it's too soon. Like, I, I don't understand that aspect of it, and I never bought it, and I think that causes problems later in the game. The story's pretty basic. It follows you for a couple of months between the what would be the NCAA tournament, the big dance, but it's not the NCAA due to copyright issues, um, and it follows you between that and the NBA draft itself as you try to raise your draft stock and navigate the world as an athlete that stands for something. You see, as a college athlete, a teammate gets injured, his like, knee gets torn up. When his scholarship is taken away, you sit the tournament game because you don't think it was right to do that. It's an interesting concept that isn't fully explored. Instead, it focuses much more on the workouts and the combine, and it's a very linear story that only briefly touches on the uh, aspect of being more than an athlete. There is actually a very like surprisingly small amount of basketball played in this mode. The mode itself lasts for about four hours. The story mode actually largely plays out through cutscenes that range from actually interesting to cringe-inducing. It's really bad. Uh, there is one specific scene where you walk up and you have a conversation about Gatorade, and that's not a joke. That he like goes up to, I think it's like Carl Anthony Towns. It's, it's an NBA player, and they basically have a conversation with you about how Gatorade has always been there to replenish you. This is not a joke. I cannot stress enough how not a joke this is. This is contrasted with some interesting stuff throughout the game, but it's somewhat undone with your shitty character being an ass. For as much as you want to stand up for others, you really don't let anyone stand up for you or look out for your best interests. You constantly are questioning things, and you're a super easy pushover where it seems like you're pretty aligned one way, and then somebody comes in and says like two sentences, and you're like, you know, I've never thought about it like that, and you immediately switch, and it really is frustrating and it's frustrating because the person that you turn your back on is doing the best that they can do and they actually genuinely care about you on top of this it's not like you really have the option to steer the character in any particular way because there is a total lack of player agency throughout this mode there are a total of about four dialogue options that have absolutely no real um, effect on the outcome of the game and there's even one that is directly contradicted like mere minutes after you make it you go like hey no I'm good I don't want to do this and then the story pushes you in the direction to be like now you're actually going to do this and it has to introduce this other character and so I sat there and I was like why am I even making these options if none of them matter? In fact, one of the times I was sitting there, I had set my controller down because it had been such a long time since I needed I had needed to pick it up, where I didn't realize that there was a dialogue option happening because they were so rare, they were so infrequent. And it was really annoying because there are a couple of different times where I would have liked to have had the option to steer the story in a different way. There was a thing that happens in the first half that's like, you know what, I actually would like to go in that direction, that sounds pretty cool, I like what this character's selling, I like their message, I like what they're doing, I want to align myself more in this specific path, and the game goes, no, 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 we want you to go over here, and it's not that much more interesting. For me, I found the most interesting part of this game to be the combine. It's an interesting taste of, like, what an athlete has to go through, and I mean, it's a very, like, broad, like, tip of the iceberg taste, but it kind of gives you an idea of what an athlete goes through just to get themselves on the map to raise their draft stock with teams, get teams interested. Um, it does boil down mostly to a series of mini games that you have to do. Only one of them I didn't like. The bench press doesn't feel like the controls are very responsive. I really struggled with it in a way that I didn't struggle with the other events. All the other ones made sense and they clicked. So the cool thing is, is they give you a couple of practice rounds before you get your official like draft combine official score and that's helpful because like you know you goof up one you get it better on the second attempt you feel good going into that third one but the the bench press one i just never quite got the rhythm of 
And that was part of the problem is that there's something about this game that just feels off from a gameplay perspective and I haven't talked about that a lot because there isn't a lot of gameplay in this particular mode. And it's kind of a big problem because the game is counting on you to perform well to raise your draft stock, but there are large sections where you don't play at all so you kind of lose that touch with your character where early in the game you play, or early in the mode I should say, you play your like a college game and then you play like a, a five on five full court scrimmage game. And as I was playing, I started to get into the rhythm, started to understand the animations of my character and was starting to make shots, played well on defense. Because there's such a large chunk between that and when the combine happens, and even after the combine, when you go, you have to schedule workouts for three separate teams, um, I lost touch of, with what the character was doing. And I was like, oh boy, like a lot of the shots were short. My defense was horrid. But for some reason, my draft stock kept going up. I selected the three teams. I picked Indiana, Milwaukee, and Portland, and two of those games were absolute stinkers. But for some reason, I kept going up in the draft stock. I was missing shots badly. I was playing very poorly on defense, and there's no reason that anyone would look at that and go like, hey, this is a person that we have to not only put on our board, but raise their draft stock. Those games should have, at best, been like a level off, and at worst dropped me below where I started. And that just felt really weird. It felt like it was really hard to not get drafted. Like it was, all this stuff was kind of bent in your favor so that the story mode worked out and had a happy ending. There's actually a pretty easy fix for this. Give people an optional like two minute shoot around warm up. If you feel like you're good, you can skip it. If you're like me and you're like, boy, I could really use like a little bit of a rhythm getter into her, if that makes sense. Um, that I think would help make the draft stock raising make more sense because I would feel like I'm playing better to be like, okay, cool. Now I am, I am a late first round pick because I feel like I'm playing well and not just like the game is pushing me in a specific direction. As far as the plot goes, it is very simplistic, but for whatever reason during the summer league, there is an entire plot point that is just not explained. And it's weird because it's a huge issue from uh, early in the game that like comes back up and it like feels very full circle but also the in-game commentators repeatedly mention it and they never talk about it they have a conversation the two characters have a conversation and it's never brought up and it's like how did that make it through the cracks how did that slip through and go like we're just not gonna worry about it it's like that doesn't make any sense and I was sitting there just going like there's no clarity with this and it doesn't work. Overall, this is a really interesting experiment. This is stuff that I like. We've seen it with the long shot mode. We saw it with Spike Lee's 2K joint that he did back in 2K16 that people really didn't like. I wasn't super hot on it, but I kind of saw where they were going. I thought it was interesting enough. It's very hokey and cheesy. And I think sports games, because I've talked about both long shots on this show, um, sports games kind of inherently are cheesy in a weird way. Most of the time they can get around it. This was one that I really struggled with. There are good ideas and there are interesting ideas and there are cool concepts. None of them are really explored fully. And because I never really bought into people are doubting me because I stuck in college for four years, I think some of the issues with this really stick out more to me. Uh, the performances for the most part are pretty good. You can definitely tell who's an NBA player and who is an actor. You have Idris Elba, Thomas Middlechurch, Rosario Dawson. They're all really good. There's Jaleel White is in there. Shout out to Big Fat Liar, 2002's best movie. I think Clock Stoppers came out that year, so maybe the second best movie. No, Big Fat Liar. I really like Big Fat Liar. I, they made a sequel to that movie. They made big, Bigger, Fatter, Liar. Anyway, he's in there for like literally two lines that if you make a specific dialogue option, you probably just miss. It's really weird because there are a ton of stars in there. Nobody really does anything. It's fine. The game looks fantastic. I can't really speak to the gameplay, mainly because there isn't a ton of it and also because I don't play these year to year. So I'm in a little bit of like a Call of Duty-esque scenario where... Um, I can tell you like broad strokes, I think there are control delays, like either the animations are too long or it just doesn't read when I'm pushing the X button to uh, initiate a shot very well. It's, it's one of those two things I couldn't really figure out what it was in the very limited gameplay that there is in this game. It's very cutscene heavy. I feel like there are missed opportunities with it. And I think part of it is not only does it not really dive into some of its ideas, but I think part of it is also that it's hand tied by the game's E for Everyone rating. Because it's E for Everyone, they can't really dive into anything too, too much because it has to maintain a very specific 
rating to sell the numbers that it does. And I think that kind of hand ties this mode because there's a there's a moment early in the game where um, your character is being talked to by an agent and it's talk he's talking about like the things that you're going to have to go up against. And the only thing he mentions, the only like temptation he mentions is social media. And it's like, there's a lot more stuff that's going on here, but you can't talk about it because you need to hit a specific age rating for your sales numbers. If these sports games really want to go in a direction of telling stories, I wonder if they should just break them out and sell them for like 10 to $15 and bump that rating up to make it a little deeper, to make it a little more interesting because at the end of the day, this is an interesting experiment that oftentimes feels like missed opportunity to actually dive into what it's like to be an athlete or at least scratch the, like the very tip of the iceberg. As it stands, it's kind of a just meh. Whew. Thank goodness that review ended before the game did. Be a real shame if you saw the final score. <laughs> Switching gears to Gears 5, <laughs> and if you think, hey, did Sean specifically review Gears Second just so he could make that dumb joke, uh, you're absolutely right. Gears 5 is a really interesting game because I don't actually like the Gears franchise, and I actually like this game. It's amazing. Two things are amazing about this game. One, it's amazing what you can do if you change out the, uh, the setting palette and the color palette of your game and you move the main characters around and make them somewhat different to take an older franchise and make it appealing and um, approachable to newer players. And two, it speaks to the power of Xbox Game Pass because that's why I played this game. It was easy to just have a subscription and be like, you know what, Gears 5 looks kind of fun. I watched a gameplay video of the Horde mode from a group that I like. Maybe I'll have fun with this. The Gears franchise is interesting in concept but I don't really like it that much because I don't like the main characters of the game this one focuses on someone different maybe it's worth it click click and now here we are and I'm positively reviewing a Gears game so the biggest question from a very inexperienced Gears person is how is the story is it easy to follow and for the most part it actually is I don't necessarily understand all the intricacies and all the character relationships. That's fine. I get enough of the like grand scheme of things. I understand that uh, JD is Dom's son. Cool. I get that, that Kate has some sort of connection to the swarm through her mother and her grandmother. Cool. I get that. And I also understand the main objective that I'm working towards throughout the game. I need to uh, get the hammer of Dawn and then I need to adjust some satellites or something with a rocket. Whatever, I, I get what's going on from the, the broad stroke of things. There are only really two problems that I had with the story. Uh, number one, the first act is a little dull because you're not playing as the best character in the game or the most exciting character in the game. You're playing as Dom's son, JD. He's just not that interesting. Um, and the first act is kind of... It, it, for the most part, from like a gameplay perspective, is very useless to the rest of the game but the main objective is very obviously important but once the game kicks into its second act it switches the focus from jd and it gives us the main character of kate she is absolutely fantastic i loved playing as her she was interesting and conflicted and i just i thought that she was layered in a way that was engaging in um, aspects that characters in this game have not been before. She's teamed up with Dell, who is absolutely fantastic. What I like so much about Dell is that he just knew shit. Like Kate would repeatedly ask questions and he would always have the answer. And I really like their, their back and forth where he answers a bunch of questions and she goes, why do you know so much stuff? And he's just like, I just like knowing shit. Like it's cool. Like cool. Awesome. That's fantastic. You have characteristics to your to your character you're interesting you're fun you're engaging what i especially liked about their relationship was that even though dell kind of has doubts every once in a while they are instantly wiped away he believes kate he believes in kate and he understands what he's doing he's not there because he feels like he has to be he's there because he wants to be and there's a specific point about halfway through the game where I feel like most games would write that character to run and leave, but you see that he has like maybe like a split second of doubt, but that's immediately erased and he's just like, no, I'm here. I'm here and I'm here to be here. And it's fucking awesome. And I loved it so much. And then you even have Foz, who is that like cocky dick that you just want to punch in the jaw. 
that's a characteristic that's interesting i want to hit you in the face because you're so goddamn annoying but that's something like anytime dom shows up on screen he sucks every bit of energy out of it it's it's incredible to watch him walk into a scene and just be like we get it you're a grumbly old man please leave the game go somewhere else do something else i don't want to listen to you you're just so boring in comparison to these other three or four very fleshed out interesting characters there are genuinely funny moments in this game um actually going back to even though i didn't really like the first act overall i really liked uh baird and his like ai there's something about sarcastic ai that always gets me and i just find very funny and it just it just tickles my funny bone in a way of like the the flat response that is clearly supposed to be sarcastic it's just it's good stuff like i laughed out loud at this game and i think that's such a huge key to this is i played gears of war 2 and every time i talk about that game i go man i really didn't like gears of war 2 and after playing this game i think i understand why i don't like any of those characters and so when I don't like the characters, I don't give a shit, and when I don't give a shit, then all of a sudden I'm annoyed with the gameplay mechanics or the gameplay style. This game, after the second act switch, when it moves to Kate, everything clicked. I liked the characters, I cared about the story enough to get me through, I understood the mission, and the gameplay I thought was actually quite fun. I liked the way the uh, the enemies were kind of like bullet spongy. This is something you, you, if you had asked me four months ago, I'd have been like, what are you fucking dumb? That's stupid. And I hate it. This game works in such a wonderful way. I, I, I can't believe, like, it boggles my mind how excited I am about this game. How when I was done with the campaign, I actually went into the multiplayer and I tried my hand at it. And you're watching footage of it right now. And it's not great because I'm very bad at this game. Um, but I went in and I was like, you know what? I'll give it a shot. Like I'll hang out and I'll stick around with this game a little bit longer than I normally would have because I had such a good time with it and because I liked these characters so much. I enjoyed the open world aspects of it. Uh, the open world stuff isn't terribly large. There's a few main missions in each open area and there are a couple of, uh, like smaller areas that you can look into like side objectives that aren't super necessary they're interesting enough what i noticed most in regards to this area or to the open world area was the way the levels were designed the way you would like enter through the front gate battle through waves of enemies and objectives to get to your main objective and then they would give you or they would point you in the direction of a shortcut that would put you back where it was and you didn't have to re-go through that area which artificially inflates the time and can be like kind of annoying and a drag like i like that they avoided that sort of thing there are only two times where they have you go through a section uh multiple times but they're very specific reasons and they made sense that's really smart level design and i was a big fan of it like let me go in through the front give me a side exit that's a quicker escape route and puts me back so i can just quickly move on and i don't have to feel like now you're really just reusing this level. Top tier level design, I loved it. The only other thing from a story perspective that I wasn't a super big fan of is it kind of tails off with the Kate connection to the swarm and it shifts the focus from her trying to find the answer to that to taking down like a big like kind of like tortoise looking bad guy i'm not really sure exactly what it was it has a bunch of tentacles it has like a, a face of a turtle that's what you have to fight and that's your big main uh main baddie that you have to defeat i understand why they're doing this it seems like gears 4 was the start of a new trilogy and it's very clear that they're trying to set up a big baddie for the like third game finale but i do think it drops the ball just a little bit because so much of the focus in Act 2 is getting more information about Kate and her connection to the swarm. It just feels like they kind of fumbled it and maybe they could have done something a little bit different to set up how powerful this particular character is. The game has a great flow, a great pacing. Again, it goes back to that level design thing of not making me spend 30 minutes in an area, making me only spend 20 minutes in that area and giving me a shortcut out. Um, there were only two parts of it that really annoyed me. The boss battle at the end of Act 2, I didn't think the mechanics of, of were explained very well. I didn't understand the concept that you could shoot the ice on the ground because I don't remember it being introduced to me at any pr uh, prior point. I understood that it would break, but I didn't know that you could shoot your gun at it. I don't know why that didn't click. As soon as I did figure it out, it was actually a pretty easy 
uh, boss battle to get around, even though I don't think I really understood the third phase of it. I feel like I got just kind of lucky. Or the game was like, you've died in this like 20 times. We're going to go ahead and just give you an out. That way you can just move on. And then there is a part later toward the end of Act 3 that has some really annoying uh, enemy configurement that uh, was really frustrating and took me a little bit to get through, but it wasn't that bad. It moves at a good clip. I understood the broad strokes of the story and I loved the characters. I am excited to play a Gears game again, like when the next Gears of War comes out or Gears 6 comes out. I'll be there day one to check it out because I liked Kate so much and I liked Dell so much. Um, it's, it's a really great game. And if you have Xbox Game Pass, it's absolutely worth the download. Time to check out this week's new releases and my goodness is there a crap load of it across everything. There's just a ton of stuff. Huh. There are three movies hitting Blu-ray this week. The Goldfinch, which is a movie that I missed because it was in theaters for almost the exact amount of time that I was out of town and I just didn't get to it. Uh, Ready or Not, one of the year's more pleasant surprises is out on Blu-ray. And then Big Trouble in Little China has a bunch of different editions out. It's kind of crazy to look at, um, but that's a, an older movie getting a new Blu-ray release this week. The theaters are busy with Dark Waters hitting wide release. Uh, Portrait of a Lady on Fire and In Fabric, I'm sure, are much smaller releases that I don't know if we'll see anytime soon. And then finally, 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 I could not be more excited about this. But Waves and Honey Boy are finally here locally, and I'm excited to go see them, and those will be the reviews on next week's show. And then the games are as busy as they've been in a very long time. I went through the lists of what's coming out on my like, the Xbox Wire and the PlayStation blog, and it was just like, man, this is a cool week of stuff. First up, we have some games that are coming to Xbox Game Pass. Halo Reach is finally joining the Master Chief Collection. That's a remake a long time uh, in the making. People have been very excited for it. In addition to Halo Reach joining the Master Chief Collection, uh, you can also pick up My Friend Pedro on Xbox Game Pass and Wonder Song. Life is Strange 2 finishes up its season with its fifth and final episode. Tools Up is a game that's coming out this week that looks really neat. It's uh, kind of like, it looks kind of like overcooked, but instead of cooking, your moving things and it looks really fun and like chaotic colorful action and we're still not done with the games yet arise a simple story is out seek hearts and ever reach project eden round out a very big week of games as far as the streams happening over on twitch.tv slash johannesaurus rex uh this week is going to be making up for last week um, last week i was going to try and get through all of life is strange 2 but then i got really sick and i couldn't do that so so far i've only played the uh prologue episode and the first episode of life is strange 2 this week, I'm going to play episode two on Wednesday, three on Friday, four on Saturday, and five on Sunday. So tune in for that. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode. If you like the content, you can scroll on down and you can hit that subscribe button. Or you can scroll on down a little bit more after you hit the subscribe button. And you can let me know what you thought of NBA 2K20's story mode. Or you can tell me what you think of Gears 5. Are you still playing it? It's a couple months after release. I'm curious if, if you're still enjoying the game. There is a lot to enjoy with that game. Be sure to check out the streams over on twitch.tv slash Rex on Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then check back right here for more Week in Review every single Tuesday. We'll see you next week.